unfortunately, there was a situation with the black box back there and the mic is in there, so we're going to have to improvise. If your attention of your ears could be bearing with us, I believe that everyone would be able to hear. How about that? All right, can everybody hear me all right back there? All right, move up, move up close. to the flag.
Good job.
We're going to ask them to start over so you can hear this up later.
States were not happy at first with their powers being taken away, but in the long run it helped our country to work as a whole. The government, the states, and the people all know how they fit due to the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights helps our society run as well. We know our place, we have our rights, and the government cannot take them away. The Bill of Rights provides protection for our fundamental rights. It gives us freedom of speech, the right to bear arms, and the rights to be able to concepts of law. The Bill of Rights was never created. The Bill, if the Bill of Rights were never created, we would have no order. We need a Bill of Rights for us as citizens of the United States and our government to remain for the people, by the people, and to stand with.
chaplain from 2016 to the present. He's a member of the Veterans Peer Support Outreach of Indiana. He's a member of and organizer of MJT, Men Join Together Conference, from 2011 to the present. He is a member of the Second Amendment Patriot, Sergeant of Arms, from 2013 to the present. And uh, he is a member of Citizens for Liberty from 2015 to the present. And one of the co founders of Citizens for Liberty. Now it's my pleasure to introduce to you this year's Citizen of the Year Award winner, David Nixon. All right.
This is for all Americans. There's one constitution. You can go to the Archives Building in Washington, D.C. There's not a Democrat constitution and a Republican constitution. There's not a Democrat Declaration of Independence and a Republican Declaration of Independence. Those parties didn't even exist in the 1700s. That's right. We have one document that unites us under God, and that's what I want to share today. Institute on the Constitution is an organization that teaches the Constitution. That's why I'm so proud to be here, because you all have learned the Constitution. And let me just tell you, you're just getting started. You've really scratched the surface. When you dive down into this, you're going to be fascinated. My head exploded when I started to realize these truths. We have a course of study that uh, is taught in all 50 states around the country. Uh, David Christmas, thank you for coming up. He's one of our instructors back there. Everybody, you can get in touch with him if you want to take this course. We have churches that teach this course, schools that teach this course, uh, course homeschoolers. It's a civics credit, um, and we have them all over the country. So that's the organization there. We have an information table when we're done. I'll share with you a little bit more about the organization. But for the sake of time, let's continue going. The, the founders of the Constitution, the framers of the Constitution, wrote the Constitution for this reason. Can anybody read the screen up there? See that bottom line down there? They wrote the Constitution to if we could all say it together, secure blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. So what this organization does is passing liberty to our posterity. That's future generations. These are my children. They're much older now, but they were cuter then, so I like to use that picture. Now they talk like this. They're almost the size of me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, my oldest son is a very smart, gifted young man. He's in college two years early, but he gave a give an answer at a uh, confirmation class of his, and the little girl sitting next to him said, Pastor, how did he get so smart? So the pastor pointed to me in the back of the room, because we homeschooled him. He said, do you see that man back there? His wife. <laughs> well, that's not actually my wife. It's just a picture of her. <laughs> but that's my family. I wanted to introduce them to you. They get to travel with me from time to time, but right now they're waiting for me at home. Uh, to get home. The Bill of Rights. Let's go to the Fifth Amendment. Who read the Fifth Amendment over here? I think it was you. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure if you all heard the Fifth Amendment. It's rather long. My oldest son has all the amendments memorized. Uh, and when he gave the Fifth Amendment, I could never memorize it. It's a very tricky amendment. But one of the key phrases in the Bill of Rights, let's read it together. No person deprived of life, liberty, or property without the process of law. We read it. LLP is what I call it. If you're from the old school like I am, I like to sing the song, Are You Down With LLP? There's old people here. Naughty by nature song. OOP is very bad. I like LLP, okay? OPP, OOP. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property. Unless you break the law, you cannot forfeit your right to life, liberty, or property. That is awesome. Because if you travel around the world, guess what? Your life, liberty, and property belongs to who? Maybe it's the thugs. Maybe it's the gangs. Maybe it's the drug dealers, the cartels. Maybe it's the government. It certainly doesn't belong to you. And you certainly don't have a government that swears an oath to defend and protect your life, liberty, and property. They're looking out for what they can get We all love our freedom, we all love our life, we love our liberty, we love our property, because this is America. <laughs> now, how many of you believe we're born equal? Raise your hand for it, please. Awesome. It sounds wonderful. It, it, it makes, it comforts us. We're born equal, but we're not. It says nowhere in any founding documents that all men are born equal. What does it say? Let's read the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created. What'd you say? Created. It doesn't say born? At what point are you created? Inside of the womb or outside of the womb? You're created inside the womb, because that looked really funny if you were like being created out here, right? Imagine your mom walking around. That would be strange. <laughs> we're created equal. If you have to wait to be born to have the right to life, liberty, and property, then guess where it's not safe to be? If we can determine that life, eh, it's 
inconvenient. Let's get rid of it. And guess what comes next? When you get old, you need a hip replacement. And we all end up having to pay for it. But it's really expensive. And you're only going to live for a couple years anyways. You're not really worth anything in our culture. Forget the hip replacement. Just sit in a chair, man. We don't determine the value of life, liberty, property. We don't determine if you have the right to life, liberty, or property. Guess who does? The Creator. Isn't that beautiful? It says it right there. It's like the old ragu commercials. Hey, is it got tomatoes? Yeah, it's in there. Everything I'm saying is in there. Yeah. I can give this presentation across the United States because it's historically factual. And I thank God that my rights come from my Creator. How many of you want government rights? Anybody? Because if you're a Democrat, you're not going to get any rights from the Republicans, right? <laughs> and if you're a Republican, you're going to not get any rights from a Democrat, potentially. But if your rights come from God, then can a Republican or a Democrat take your rights away? No. No. Right now we have another control system. We look to the courts to determine what our rights are. What does the Constitution say? That's wrong. When a referee in a ball game makes a bad call, does that bad call now apply to every game moving forward? Can the referee come out at halftime and say, hey, you know what, Colts, good job, you're in the Super Bowl, you're winning 50 to 7, but we're going to make it so you only get two downs to convert to a first. We're going to give the Vikings, who you're beating right now, 10 downs to convert. Can a referee change the rules of the game in the middle of the game? Can they change it before the game? Heck no! no. The job is just to apply the rules to the two parties in front of them. That's all the courts were designed to do. So if a court says it's okay to kill a created person in the womb, does that matter? Do a little research. Look into the Dred Scott decision. That was a Supreme Court ruling too, and it was nuts. So we don't listen to it. They made an error. That error does not apply to future rulings or future law, because all law is created in the legislature. Does that make sense? A little civics lesson. So why is this Bill of Rights given? A right is something I have the freedom to exercise. So if I have the right to do something, I can do it. You can't prevent that. We listed ten of those Bill of Rights earlier. But I don't have the right to break the law. See, that's called crime. We think now in America, well, freedom of speech, I can say what I want. No, 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 there's boundaries there. You can't threaten somebody's life. You can't yell fire in a crowded room. You can't print libel. You can't slander somebody. That's called crime. I should know. When I was breaking the law as a young person, the police didn't show up and say, hey, you're under arrest. And the other officer looks at him and says, well, Jim, he's free to do what he wants. No! On the ground, here's the cops. You're now apprehended. You broke the law. You don't have freedom to do that. There is a law. And that law protects and defends our right. Freedom is found inside of the law. That law is the law of nature. And nature's God. Does anybody know what our founders meant by that? The law of nature and nature's God? There's certain natural laws that you can't break. Gravity. If I run for Congress and you pass a bill that says you have the right to fly like Superman, okay? What's stopping you from flying? Gravity. Gravity hates women, right? So we need to get rid of it. We need to get rid of gravity. It's discriminatory. It hates us. It denies us the privilege and the right to fly. So we get the government to give us the right to fly. We make the Supreme Court say that gravity is illegal now been discriminating us for 240 years. I know, this is insane, isn't it? Makes you want to roll your eyes, shake your nuts. <laughs> Just turn on C-SPAN sometime. <laughs> so we get the right to fly. The court upholds it. The president signs it. Congress came to us. Tomorrow we're going to get up on top of the armory and we're going to fly. What do you think? I'll let you go first because I'm the politician. <laughs> you going to fly? Maybe for three seconds, but nothing can stop you from facing the ramifications of breaking God's law. Nothing can stop that. You can spill all the ink on paper you want, you can have all the guns you want, and all the law enforcement you want, but you can't change the law. It exists. You don't break the law, the law breaks you. 
That's why I think it's so tragic and silly when we try to do away with things like the Ten Commandments. That's the basis for common law in America. Who did Moses ever hurt, man? The poor guy talking about hate. Why are you hating on Moses? Now the right to do wrong. In the Declaration of Independence, we declare it's based off the supposition there is a creator God. And that God is the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Does that mean that other people can't worship other gods? No. It means that our God gave us our rights. Our God gave us a law to protect those rights. That's why he said, thou shalt not kill, because he gave you the right to life. He said, thou shalt not steal, he gave you the right to property. He said you could not bear false witness against another to steal their property or jeopardize their, their, their liberty. Excuse me. These concepts come from God. Again, remember Ragu? It's in there. Read the Declaration of Independence specifically states that. Almost half of the signers of the Declaration of Independence had seminary degrees. Did you know that? Oh, our founders were deists and atheists. They hated God. No! When's the last time you believed in the press anyways? Raise your hand if you do. Thank you. This is what it means for the American right here. Three simple bullet points to pull out the philosophy of prayer. Number one, there is a God. Can we say that together? There is a God. Remember, there's a creator that created us. We didn't just fall in by happenstance and chance. Because if we did, then we got to choose a different God. And that God, guess who it would be? God. So if there is a God, we declare as Americans that our rights come from government. Our rights come from him. Nonsense about free, nothing to free. Go to the tire shop, buy three tires, get one free. Just tell the mechanic, I'll just take the free one. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> the seven articles of the Constitution were meant to be chalk lines on a football field. What happens if a man goes out of bounds on the football field? What do the referees do? They blow the whistle, they stop the play. Can I run out of bounds, run down to the one yard line, jump back in, and then score a touchdown? No. The place stops where I go out of bounds. The Constitution was meant to limit government and stop them when they go outside of the Constitution. So why did we come up with a Bill of Rights? Because the government can only do what we tell it to do. Most of you young people in here have played gaming systems, right? Everybody knows. So people create the programs of those. Have you ever been playing Minecraft and all of a sudden it jumps to Call of Duty? Do games do that? No. As a matter of fact, that's impossible. Because the guy who wrote the code wrote a specific code and can do no more. That is what the Constitution is. It is the code. But nowadays, I'm going to tell you what the government's doing. What's happening now is like, you and I get a little deal. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I'm picking on you. You're on the end here. What was your name? Lamar? Lamar, right? Lamar, you have a sweet car. What kind of car do you got? Just you got a Dodge Charger. What year is that Dodge Charger, Lamar? 2018. 2018. Boom! Dodge Charger chilling in his garage. His $3 million home. Lamar says, Well, Jake, you look poor. Come on over here. I got a job for you. So I said, What's your job, Lamar? And he's like, Listen, I'm going to the Bahamas for about six months. Okay? I need you to twice a week come into my garage. Here's the garage door. Open the garage door, start my Dodge Charger so the gas doesn't get funky. Let it run for five minutes. 
then leave. Shut the car off, shut the garage door. Do that twice a week. For my six months I'm gone, I'm going to pay you $7,000. I say, sweet, let's do it. You're on. We shake on it. It's good. You go to the Bahamas, you're chilling, you're having fun. You come back. You're excited to see the Dodge Charger. You open the garage door. Your bumper is laying on the ground. Your charger is filthy, bro. There's a dent in the driver's side door. You open the car. The tank of gas is on empty. There's Taco Bell wrappers all over. I show up like you tell me to do. I say, hey, Lamar. How was your trip, man? Did you have fun? Oh, great, great. Can I get that uh, seven thousand dollars? What are you gonna say to me? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Why not? You trash my car. I trashed your car. I just took it for a spin, man. I started it just like you said, every, twice a week. It was, it was amazing. Nice car, by the way. <laughs> not sure what to make of that. Why won't you give me my money? Trash your car. You didn't say I couldn't trash your car. You could drive it either. Yeah, no, but you didn't say that I did couldn't drive it. Right. Well, now I got him on his heels, and that's what we're doing. That's what government does to us. What they say to us is, "Well, we're going to do this," and you're like, "Well, well wait a second. It's 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 not a it's not a good idea to do that." And they say, "Well, yeah, it is. They convince it's a good idea." Ma'am, if I come over to dinner to your house, okay? And uh, you, you serve me a great dinner, it's fantastic, but I notice that your decor is just horrible. Your couch is so ugly, it clashes with the flooring, your drapery needs fixing. So when you go to work tomorrow, I break into your house and I fix everything. And let's say that I even make it look better than when I started. Does that make what I did legal? No. So even if what government does, it becomes better, that doesn't mean they have a right to do it. What Lamar said is, hey, I didn't give you permission to drive my car. But I threw it back on him and I said, well, you didn't tell me I needed, you, know, you didn't tell me I could. It's because these doggone lawyers populate Washington. You know what I'm saying? You know, the two yes. men walking through the graveyard that saw the lawyer's headstone said, a lawyer and a good man, and one guy nudged his buddy and he said, there's two people buried in that grave. <laughs> so the Constitution was just designed to be the computer program to tell government what to do, but now government has gone way out of bounds. So what the framers, the anti-federalists, says you, uh, right and said, they said, well, we know people, and people are sinners. How many of you trust just one man with absolute authority and power in this country? We don't have that. The president has very limited delegated authorities. Just a small amount of words describe his authority. Well, we thought with the Bill of Rights, we could identify a few rights that would be brick walls on that sideline. Could you imagine that guy about to fall out of bounds, whack his face on a brick wall? Wouldn't it be great if Congress did that? Every time they try to go outside, they just whack their face on a brick wall? I mean, not physically, of course, because that would be wrong with that. But that's what that brick wall is for. It's to be evidently written so we can see it. So we created a Bill of Rights with that brick wall on sidelines. Now, Historically, this concept was all back in the history lesson, plus we're out of time to do that, so I'm just going to run through. This concept originated with our English ancestors. It was called an Englishman's Bill of Rights. We were asserting our rights to a tyrant king. That's all that was going on. James Madison said, why would we create a Bill of Rights? If we create a Bill of Rights, in other words, if we create a deal, and we tell them a handful of things that they can't do, then they're going to try to do a whole bunch of stuff that's not written there, which is why we have the Ten Commandments, or Ten Ten Amendments. The Tenth Amendment states, whatever's not written here, you don't have any authority to do that either. We just want to make sure that there's big ten blinking lights in your face as a brick wall. I'm sorry if that was confusing. Make our course, it'll make a lot more sense. We'll have a lot more time to talk about it. I want to talk about the First Amendment because I believe, and it's right in the First Amendment. It's the most important amendment. Let's read it together. Congress shall make no law with respect to the establishment of religion. Prohibiting the free exercise thereof, abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peacefully to assemble, petition the government for a redress of freedom. Does it say anywhere in that First Amendment separation of church and state? 
Does it say that if you're in government, you can't pray? Heck, Congress opened a session with prayer. Did you guys know that? Most state legislatures do as well. Yeah. You know why? Because they're smart. They know they can't do this on their own. That's insane. Liberty does not come from man. Liberty comes from our creator. And liberty is sustained by him as well. So in this, this separation of church and state, we have different duties and functions of churches and states. I don't have time to get into that either. Um, but, in the colonial charters, we had the New England colonies that were of a certain... When I was a kid, if you said, what religion were you? I was Catholic. My friend Pete Brown, he was Methodist. My, uh, my other friend, my girlfriend, she was Lutheran. That was what religion she was. That's what we understood as religion. Different sects and different denominations. Because in America, we had all sorts of different Christian religions. And we didn't want one to take dominance over another, because back then, they would beat people up. We don't necessarily do that anymore. Lutherans get along with Catholics pretty well now. That's a good thing. But back then, it wasn't so. At the time of the First Amendment, they specifically wanted to avoid what they had in England. That was an establishment of a denomination. Whereas if you weren't this denomination, had to revolt and we would take your life. It was treasonous. The original versions of the First Amendment. The First Amendment said, Congress shall not make any law establish any religious denominations. The second version, Congress shall not make a law establishing any particular denomination. Again, we're talking about Christianity here. Congress shall make no law establishing any particular denomination in preference to others. Finally, Congress shall make no law establishing religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The wording for this First Amendment was provided by a man named Fisher Ames. Fisher Ames made the unequivocal statement that the Bible is the source of sound morality and behavior in America, and that we must not let it be separated from the classroom. So guys, if you're a Christian, read the Bible in school. It's totally cool. Call me if you have any problems. We have plenty of attorney friends. If you're a Christian, you can wear a Christian shirt. If you're a cheerleader, you want to put scripture on your cheek, go for it. Hey, book system, it's become kind to be Christian now. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's wild. Oh, you're a Christian? You're in trouble. Bring it on. The Second Amendment protects the right to bear arms. Again, I, I can rock through these pretty quickly, but we're running a long time. Just a review of the Bill of Rights. If you want to take a picture of this, this summarizes them. It gives you the cliff notes of it. These Bill of Rights are sacred, but they're not our only rights. Our rights come from our Creator, and that's what I want to instill in everybody right now. It is very important that we understand our rights come from the Creator. Because if not, then we'll be sitting on the edge of our chair every time Congress talks, or the courts issue an opinion, or the President has something to say. And if we ever allow a concept of God God-given rights and God-given law to escape our mind and say, well, that's just for church. Then I just give you a new flash. You have no security for your rights. Your rights will go by the wayside. And then we will become slaves to whoever's in power. And that is exactly why we had a war for independence. For that very concept and for that very reason. So with that, I just want to encourage you again. We have a lot of resources at Institute of the Constitution. I would love to teach and train and help any. We have a number of individuals that are in this room that would do the same. Did anybody see us on the news yesterday? Channel 44? We didn't record it because we're smart. Uh, but it's a pleasure to be a part of the celebration. And I want to thank all of you for attending. I want to thank all of you for your support of the next generation learning this. Because I tell you what, we got a lot of competition. But I just want to say it is so, so important. Now, with that, I happen to be a minister, and I, I'd like to pray for us, if that's okay. I'm not closing out everything, because I know we still got uh, a couple more things on the docket here. Oh, wait. Kirk was supposed to close it. Right? Where's Kirk? Okay. That's you. You want to close the prayer. Well, bring it on, brother. Let's go, citizen of the year. What the heck? <laughs> Just chop liver over here. God bless you guys and congratulations on you. To keep things moving along, I want to thank each and every one of you as well for sitting on this committee and being part of this. Uh, you young people,
each one reach one in order to teach one. That way, each and every one of us can be successful in life. Always remember, there is no no. They're all yes until you stop. The moment you stop, all your no's become reality. And we don't want that in our lives. You make us successful. The young individuals that we have here, our hosts, I'm so proud of them. So as I close with a portion of this prayer, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I just need you to say two things with me. I am. I am. He is. He is. The I am. The I am. I am. I am. He is. He is. The I am. The I am. So if you don't know yourself, then your I am's are weak. But if you do know yourself, he is. You are. Be that way. Also, I leave it up to the group. I want to say to Senator Jim Tom for being here. We do have some uh, leaders here, and there's many others. So if you get a chance, please, before you leave, say something to them. Let us bow our hands. There's a star shining over this building right now. And that star is the young minds that has made our star shine even deeper. We are not weak. It is the devil that is weak. Mm -hmm. We are strong. And if we continue to join together, the devil will continue to get weak. Let these words be what we ask you to allow them to be. Done. And that is the free in our hearts, the free in our minds, and the free in our soul. We thank you for the day. We thank you for each and every one of the team members of the Citizen for Liberty and the Bill of Rights readers and those that are one today. They are the ones that you have allowed us to have in our lives. And if we go wrong, Lord, let us look down to them. Let us look up to you. And when we look down, Father, we're not talking to the ground. We're looking next to us. We're looking around. And everything that we try to do, let it be approved by you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, our first winner is ticket number 57556. 